We are already a week into 2022 and everyone has been busy getting back into the flow of things, getting back into their work routines and just getting used to the brand new year. I've been sorting this room out and changing everything around and sorting all my gear out and very soon I will be doing a 2022 YouTube studio tour of this whole room because I've changed quite a bit about it as you might have noticed in a few of my last videos but with sorting all my gear out I thought it would be the perfect time to do a 2022 it's very heavy what's in my camera bag let's get into it So I'm literally just gonna go straight into this video, no messing around at all. And we're gonna start off with the camera bag itself. Now this is the Peter McKinnon Nomatic Travel Camera Bag. And I've had this for almost coming up to two years now and it still looks, apart from a couple of very minor scratches, it still looks in pristine condition. It looks brand new, it is my favorite camera bag I've ever used. I've made a video on it in the past if you wanna go and check that out. But this thing, it was expensive, I won't lie, but it was worth every single penny. And I would highly recommend it, even if you aren't a fan of Peter McKinnon. The Peter McKinnon travel bag is incredible. So as we flip it over and we open it up inside, you can start to see what I have in my camera bag. Now obviously not everything specifically is in here at the moment because I'm using some of it to record this very video. However, most of it is in here and what, I, what I'm what i using I've kind of tried to replace with Holly's gear. The first thing, and this might shock some people, is the Sony ZV-1, which is an incredible little compact camera. It is absolutely perfect for documenting and doing vlogs and things like that it is such a good little camera and it turns on as soon as you open the screen it's got a nice little flip out screen so you can see what you're doing and as well it turns off as soon as you close the screen so for just speed and ease of use you cannot go wrong with the zv1 and i use it all the time for just vlogging things and trying to capture things where you don't necessarily have your main camera with you now the main camera I use is the Sony a7C and it sits in this little compartment here that I have replaced with Holly's a7R2 because I am using my Sony a7C. But the Sony a7C is an incredible little camera. It's very compact, it's full frame sensor, shoots 120 in HD and it can shoot 4K 30 as well. It is such a capable little camera. I think it's got 24 megapixels, so photo-wise it is perfect for things like social media. And the video on it is the same as the a7 III, so it's decompressed from 6K. You get a great picture from it, and you can film in log as well with S-Log2, and you get all the HLG modes, loads of different picture profiles, as is the same with any Sony camera. It does unfortunately only have 8-bit color, but for posting on videos on YouTube, that's not really a huge problem. Although one day, I would very much like the a7S III, because that is a beast of a camera. Now, moving on to lenses. What me and Holly do, because we both use Sony camera bodies, is we share lenses. And the one I have here on the Sony a7R II is the Tamron 28 to 75 millimeters f2.8. I also have here the Tamron 28 to 200 f2.8 to 5.6 and the one I'm using right now is the Tamron 17 to 28 f 2.8. Tamron are brilliant lenses and they're so much more affordable than Sony lenses as well and they're still just as good at image quality and you don't have any problems with the autofocus with all the electronics through between Tamron and the Sony camera body either. Everything works flawlessly. I'd highly recommend Tamron lenses if you own Sony camera bodies. Now what these lenses mean as well is that me and Holly have the whole focal range all the way from wide 17 millimeters all the way to a nice compressed 200 millimeters with these three lenses. Now the Tamron 28 to 200 does go 28 to 200 so there's most range in that. However, the aperture is variable so it closes down to an f5.6 fairly quickly. Although with video, that's not usually that much of a problem as long as you're keeping your eye on your exposure. My favorite of the three lenses is probably 
50 28 to 75 this is a beast of a lens it is so crisp and so sharp i absolutely love this one although i do really like them all and this one is perfect for vlogging it's not quite as wide as the sony 16 to 35 millimeters but it's so much cheaper and just as impressive now moving on to microphones and the microphone that i'm using right now is the rode videomic pro plus just about here you might i think it's slipped down a bit you might just be able to see it it might just be out of shot but it usually sits in this compartment directly here nice and snugly i use this video for 90 percent of my videos if it's not boomed like this nearer to me when i'm talking it will be sat on top of my camera and i'll be using this to capture the audio however i do also carry another microphone with me and that is the rode video wireless go and that is just in this little case and this just one end plugs into the camera and one end can attach to whoever you are trying to record and they've also got a little lapel mic as well so you can run it through your jumper and not have to have this hanging off the top of your collar. With these two microphones, I have every occasion covered for when I might need to record audio because this Rode VideoMic Pro Plus sounds absolutely brilliant. It's probably my favorite of the two mics and it turns on when you've got it plugged in, it turns on automatically when you turn your camera on. So you never need to worry about forgetting to turn your microphone on and then not having captured any audio. Sat next to the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus in my camera bag is the Tiffin Black Pro Mist filter. And I, again, use this on 99% of my videos. I absolutely love it. And what this does is it just helps soften the highlights and you get this nice blooming effect around the lights as well. So you might be able to see that nice orange light blooming a little bit. This is what helps do that. It helps just create a bit more of a nice soft cinematic image. I love this thing. It's probably one of the best filters I've ever bought. Talking about filters, I also have here some drone filters and these are very useful if you're flying your drone on a very sunny day and as we all know the sky can get very bright and there's a lot of contrast when you're trying to film drone images because the sky is bright and the land is dark if you can try and soften some of those bright lights with an nd filter you might be able to get some better drone footage and talking of drones that sits here in this compartment and if you know anything about the peter mckinnon camera bag which you probably do by now you'll know that this also turns into a backpack itself so you don't have to carry all of this around all of the time but in this compartment i keep my drone which is the dji mini 2 very capable useful little drone and i've got some batteries and also the remote controller so this drone is perfect for just getting up and in, in the air as quickly as you possibly can to try and capture that footage that you want to without having anything to worry about because you can pretty much fly it anywhere that you want to as long as you are following the drone code always follow the drone code now in this compartment here this is a little accessory pouch and in here I just like to keep a little bit of extra things so I have a spare microphone that doesn't require any batteries at all. This is the Rode Video Micro and that just sits in there in case either this battery dies or it breaks. I've also got a couple of cables for anything that needs charging and some lens caps and the body cap as well for my camera and also a Samsung T5 SSD that I do all my editing from. These are genuinely incredible and if you are doing any sort of video editing or even photo editing, I would highly recommend a good SSD as it just makes your life so much easier. Moving on to the back pouch, we have here a little, another accessory pouch and this is used for my filters. So I have a couple of ND filters and a polarizer and there's also, I think, a UV filter, which I have never used in my life, but I have it because it came free with something else. But ND filters, if you're doing video, highly recommended because sometimes you can just crank the shutter speed and no one will notice. But if you want that cinematic look, you need to use the 180 degree rule. And that means using a shutter speed that is double your frame rate. So an ND filter allows you to do that when it is a little bit brighter. And in the final pouch up here, two more accessory pouches. And this is used for my memory cards. 
so it's just a little pouch that opens up like that and I can have quick access to my memory cards and also the Peter McKinnon battery pack and this just stores my Sony camera batteries and I've also got a couple of third party RAV power ones here as well which if you use Sony cameras I would highly recommend these they are actually very very good and my favorite bit about this is Peter McKinnon with the battery pack provides the little Peter McKinnon logo stickers and if you stick these on one end then you know when it's in here which battery is out of charge because when it's dead you put it that way up and now I know that that battery is dead I like that sort of thing and as we close it up finally there is the laptop compartment on the back and I don't have the laptop in there because that's very heavy, I have the laptop here and this is the MacBook Pro 14 inch, the cheapest one you can buy. I've made lots of videos about that recently so I'm not gonna go too much into detail on that apart from mentioning it yet again that it is incredible. I love that thing so, so much. So that is everything that I carry around in my camera bag to make videos. Sometimes there are a few extra bits, maybe like a Gorillapod that might go in the side of my camera bag because sometimes I might want to carry around my full tripod that my camera's sat on right now. A Gorillapod is actually really useful. A lot of people don't like them. I do quite like it. And also a water bottle because when you're out shooting on a long day, shooting videos, shooting photos, you obviously need a drink. And this matte black water bottle that Holly got me is absolutely perfect and it matches my camera bag. I love it. So that is everything that is in my camera bag for 2022 and I finally feel like I'm at a point with all of my gear that I'm content with everything I use. Everything has a purpose. There's nothing in my camera bag that isn't used. Everything is used all the time and everything is incredibly useful. There has been occasions in the past where I've had things that I might not particularly use very much and I just stick it in my camera bag anyway, but right now everything is incredibly useful and I use it most days. And it all works really well as well. Touch wood, I don't want anything to break, but everything is fully functioning at the moment as well. So that is also a good thing. So let me know what is in your camera bag for 2022 in the comments down below. Come and say hello. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And also if you're not subscribed, if you wouldn't mind clicking that subscribe button as well, that would be hugely appreciated as this channel is growing very very quickly at the moment which is massively exciting so if you are new to the channel hello to you thank you for watching the videos i hope you keep enjoying them and yeah i think that's it i'll see you in the next video i'm doing a thumbnail i'm just trying to get a still I never know what to do though I think that might be the one. I like that one.